Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Intuitive Hour, Awaken Your Inner Voice, and I'm your host, Michelle Beltran. Thank you all for being here today. All right, how to read others, our topic for the episode today. I think you will enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first and foremost, introductions. If you are about to provide a reading, speak with a client, provide support to a loved one, you are working in some capacity assisting another using your psychic or intuitive life coaching, spiritual abilities and knowing. As you step into these powerful moments, honor them, bow to them, give thanks. We'll talk a little bit more later in the episode about a prayer of thanks and a prayer to step into the session. But as you begin in your introduction, be present in your heart space so that, that it is an honor to be with this person. They have come to you. What an honor. We want to give thanks to that. We want to bow to that. Further in your introduction with this person you're working with, they want a warm welcome. They want to hear in your voice that they're safe with you. So if you are about to embark upon some time with someone, giving them support, we need the most happy, healthy, grounded you to be coming forward. So if you're tired, if you're concerned about what you have to do in one hour or later today or tomorrow, if you're in any kind of emotional upset of your own, it would be a really good time to close up shop and not proceed. The reason is because you're in an emotional space. You're not in the center of your head. You're driven by exterior things you're needing to get to. And in that space, you, you are not present and you cannot provide accuracy and clarity to this person in front of you who you're working with. Remember that you're in charge now. They are here to listen to you who will take the lead. So again, we need the very powerful, empowered, grounded, ready you. All right, next. What's ahead? How will this unfold? Okay, as a client or family member or friend, Reedy, that you're working with, they're going to want to know how the time with you will unravel. So if there are expectations that you have, go ahead and state them. For example, when I'm in a session with a client, I like that our my client starts us off with their first question. So I explain that. We make introductions. I welcome them. I state a prayer. And then I let them know how that how the half hour or 45 minutes will proceed that it will start with their first question various things that i expect how i work you'll establish your rhythm but it is very good to let your client know this so they have some semblance of some idea of how the time with you will unfold invite your client's words on this as well if they have any expectations or desires. All right, moving on. Where are we? It's essential that you are in a quiet and uninterrupted space that you feel comfortable in. 
This is also pivotal for your client. Ensure that they're in a space where they can be uh, uninterrupted, be present. I would also recommend saging your reading space, wherever it is that you do your energy work or life coaching or spiritual work and psychic readings. Sage that space regularly just to clean out old stuck energy. You might also burn incense, light candles. You'll find your rhythm here as well. Sage is very powerful, however, to keep uh, uh, stuck energy uh, from lingering. It's one technique I do. Be mindful of what your penchant or your lean is and use it. That you have a lean to it, that you have a, dis a, a liking for candles or a certain incense or essential oil is your indication that that's what you want to use. Speaking to you, listen to it. Next, be mindful of the ticker. Okay, the client will lose track of time in your session. Uh, we this is a very heightened space. It's very easy to do, even as the reader, as the psychic, as the clairvoyant or intuitive. You may do this. So, have a timer on the side. Uh, be mindful of the, your time together. Be mindful of reminding your client as you're nearing the end of the session so that you can gradually begin winding down. Also, remind your client at the beginning of the session the time length that you have together. If it's 30 minutes, if it's 45 minutes, state that out loud at the beginning, letting them know we've got this amount of time together today. All right. One of my favorites, set an intention and say a prayer. If you forget all else, please be sure to do this. State your prayer prior to the session. And also, if possible, state it out loud. When we state something out loud, some of you who have worked with me will know this as I've uh, uh, taught this and explained it. It is called objectifying information. It is like, it is similar to writing. When we study, we write out notes. Objectifying data or information merely means to embed it in the universal DNA. That's how you want to think about it. It solidifies it. Your intention is stronger when you state what your desire is out loud. Doing this will help ground and center the session as well as yourself and the client or the reedy. And it brings you and the client to the pureness of this very important present moment. Some of you who have worked with me know that I state a prayer out loud. Do take some time to create your own prayer. With that prayer, though, have an intention. Have an intention for a successful session, accurate session, whatever it is to you. Set those intentions. Say that prayer out loud. All right, connecting to your client, the reedy. Imagine your seventh chakra. Go there right now. It's located at the top of your head. This chakra is linking to the client's seventh chakra. Imagine that. As you state your prayer, as you begin to open your session, imagine that chakra at the top of your head. See theirs. You might look at it as a color. And then create an energy cord or connection from your seventh chakra to theirs. This is a powerful alignment tool. It's going to assist you in accuracy and clarity and link you to the reedy in this present moment. Next, setting boundaries or creating a bubble, so to speak. When I work with clients, and I would encourage you to do the same, create an energetic bubble around you and they. This bubble is encasing you, so to speak. 
It's and it's also creating a boundary from outside noise. This will allow a further deepening of your connection. Pets and people, we put them aside in our sessions. There is rarely a time when another person and even a pet will be in a session. If you have agreed prior to the session that you'll do a group reading or that two people are there, wonderful. The agreement must happen first. Otherwise, most readings are done with you and the reedy and with, without pets in the room. Pets are our are, are souls and life, and they matter, but they are not to be included in the room. Uh, they have energy, and that energy can affect things unless it is a choice and uh, accepted by both who are in the reading. Okay, quiet your left brain. The most accurate psychics and intuitives have mastered this. If you've worked with me for any length of time, you've heard this before. Meditation is the key. It is the single most best way to quiet the chatter and, and sometimes chaos of the outside world. So prior to your session, uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes of meditation. We call this a cool down time. It's time to turn down that analytical thinking mind, and it is a must-do. I want to encourage you to make an agreement at this time with your left brain that you'll come back and give attention to all those to-dos of the day, because they are important. We have life. But all those to-dos that are needing to get done, we'll set them aside for this time as you're in a session with another. You'll make an agreement with yourself that you'll come back to all of those to-dos at the end of the session. Okay, moving on. Amping up your right brain. Say hello to your right brain, that intuitive mind. You might try this tool to help you do this. Visualize a knob or a dial of some kind, a meter, whatever you choose, but imagine that out in front of you. This controls your right brain. Watch the dial as it rotates and is turned all the way up. In your session, we want right brain data. We want you to be in that space. And in turn, you might also have a knob or a dial for the left brain that you turn down. Now, a caveat to that. We do need our left brain. It is essential. So turn it down to about 10%. If your scale is a 1 to 10 or 1 to 100%, turn it down to a, a about a 10%. Because we need some left brain to proceed at all times. But be mindful of where each are. And this tool, this meter, this dial will help you uh, to discern that and stay in that space of, of awareness. You might also, as you amp up your right brain, place your pointer finger on your, uh, from your non-dominant hand above your brow and between your eyes. This is the third eye space and we want to wake that up. We want to amp that up. So as you put your finger in that space and rotate it gently clockwise a few times and then counterclockwise a few times, you are sending a very powerful message to your third eye again, the seat of your clairvoyance, to begin opening. All right, finally here today, cleaning out with a separation rose. You've been in close energy quarters for the last 30 minutes with your client. You've been to, able to support them with some accurate information, perhaps what's ahead, uh, some healing space, whatever it is that has uh, come forward in the session for that client that needed to know it was a success and here you are having been in this very close this bubble connecting your chakras seventh chakras now we want to clean out now we want to separate uh, this is very essential so when you are complete I want to ask you to imagine an energetic rose out in front of you okay 
we're going to have any lingering energy, any energy that came to your space or any energy that came of theirs, of yours that went to their space, we're going to ask that all, all those energies go to this uh, separation rose that we have created out in front of ourselves on the heels of the session. So out loud, again, objectifying information, embedding it in the DN- in the DNA of the universe, giving it an intention and a strength, ask that all of your energy that has gone to the re come to that rose out in front of you. And any of their energy, the client's energy that has come to your space, gets to go into that separation rose. Then imagine or watch as that separation rose floats up into the sky and absolves all energies returning to where they are meant. You are now complete. Your energy is back with you. A nice, healthy clean-out, as we say, has happened, and that client can move forward and you in your day. All right, in closing, remember, establish your reading routine and stay consistent every time. Also, be very mindful of using those psychic tools, grounding, running energy, and prayer of protection, all done before and after your sessions. If you need a reminder on how to do any of those things, there are other episodes here on the Intuitive Hour speaking to those processes. All right, everyone, we will call this an episode. Thank you each for being here today. As always, for any questions, comments, clarity, please reach out at 800-607-1770 or email at mbeltran at michellebeltran.com. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for listening to the Intuitive Hour with Michelle Beltran. If you like what you heard, please share our podcast with a friend. And be sure to visit michellebeltran.com to get Michelle's popular Develop Your Clairvoyance ebook.